How can I know in advance how good a doctor is with injections? I'm concerned with quality of Botox and how good a doctor is with fillers. How can I know that they know how and where to inject for the best look and not just shooting it in? Thank you for your question. You're asking a very reasonable question in asking how do you know in advance how good a doctor is with injectables? And in the substance of your question, you're, you're asking about Botox and, and injectable fillers. And, and the question is, how do you know the doctor knows how and where to inject the injectable and that they're not just shooting it in? Well, you've asked a question that certainly has um, some degree of controversy to it. But I'll give you some guidelines as to how people come to me and, and how um, I have advised people about choosing a doctor for a, any procedure, whether it's injectables or anything else. A little bit of background, I'm a board certified cosmetic surgeon and fellowship trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I've been in practice for over 20 years in Manhattan and Long Island. I've been doing injectables for all this time and now I was one of the earliest doctors to use Botox uh, back in uh, 1993. So certainly the question has relevance in a lot of ways. For one thing, there's no doubt that you have been exposed to a lot of people, a lot of physicians, a lot of non-physicians offering these treatments, all claiming to be the best, the cheapest, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I'll give you some ideas as to how I would um, recommend this to you um, in determining the, what's, what works for you. First of all, understand that everyone who does these treatments comes at this from a different perspective. When it comes to the ideal outcome, what you want is someone who has a good sense of artistry, they're creative and they understand proportion. You want someone who has excellent technical skills, very good hands, someone who is committed to precision and quality in the delivery process. That means maximizing sterility, comfort for the patient, using things like topical anesthetic, local anesthetic. And there are certain, I think, red flags that are, I should say, situations where you can be a little bit more cautious. For one thing, I think that um, if, if you're responding to um, ads where people are offering very cheap injectables, I think that's a red flag. If, someone, if you're getting some kind of incentive where, again, you're, you're, it's, it's becoming the treatment is becoming com commoditized, I think that's a red flag. Um, my feeling is that injectable treatments in, is in no way different than surgery. When you are doing an injection, you're going through the skin barrier and therefore you are entering inside the body. Now that means that you want to ensure that the doctor is not going to be rushing, is, is communicating with you about what your desired outcome is, and is spending time with you. One of the, 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 uh, the challenges that people face today is they, they may find uh, something compelling about a, a physician um, and want to and go there and go to this doctor, but if they find themselves sitting and then be, and the doctor rushing through, invariably, it's not going to be as good of a result as you can get. So again, understanding those parameters is very, very important. I would tell you that one of the best ways to make this, this decision is by seeing people who actually have had treatment by, their, by this doctor. And, and what do I mean? Well, when, when, within every social group, there are going to be, there's a kind of a certain aesthetic that is consistent 
with the values of that social group. So the people who come to me very often are naturally attracted to my style because I believe in a very natural appearance. I feel like preserving character and maintaining a very natural, youthful appearance and not an exaggerated appearance is what resonates for me, resonates with my patients. Very often, those patients have friends and family members who are like-minded, and therefore they refer, or their friends may ask them, do you know somebody? And so word of mouth certainly is very, very important and very good. I think that when it, if you don't have that benefit of getting someone through referral, you may want to simply just do consultations, meet with the prospective doctor, get to know them, get to know their style, listen to how they evaluate your, the, your appearance. When I see my patients, one of the first things I do is I take photos. I take photos and I review them with the patient. I put them up and I ask the patient what bothers them the most. What do they see? What are their concerns? Like any other procedure, I want to know what's important to them, what is, what is their expectation, what is their desired result. And beyond that, my, uh, my job is not only to listen and then provide the solution for what they want, but also to educate them about other options. Very often, people are confused. It is so often that people ask me, what's the difference between Botox and Restylane? And it, it's clear that they under, they've heard the brand names and they understand they both improve wrinkles, but they don't understand how they improve wrinkles. So my role as their doctor is to educate and to give them pers a perspective. Many times we also have distinction, distinction in methods. For example, we perform a procedure where, which is basically adding volume at the structural level of the face. So this is very different than what 99% of doctors do because what we're doing is we're placing the material with a very specific way at the level of the bone structure. And that is a unique approach to facial rejuvenation. And this also further expands the idea of collateral procedures. If someone wants to have improvement in volume, they may also want improvement in skin quality. So it really is, is an educating pro education process. And what I feel is very important is that you choose someone who you're comfortable with, who will be with you for the duration. What I see, how I see myself, and for many of my patients, is I'm their beauty doctor. I don't just do their eyelid surgery or their facelift surgery or their liposuction. I also am their primary care doctor for their aesthetic needs in the, in the big picture, in the long run. Very often they're being inundated by a lot of information that is being um, promoted via talk shows and radio commercials and things like that. My job is to educate them and put things in perspective as to what, what, where the, the facts begin and where the hype ends. And so this is a very important decision. So I think that certain things that, that, that I described, including both the objective, the stylistic, and then your comfort level is the way to choose a doctor. This probably means for you is to meet with different doctors and see who you're comfortable with. You may just want to try and let a doctor who you've met do something, maybe do one treatment and see how your experience goes. I really don't think that any doctor who offers injectable treatment is just, quote, shooting it in. I think everyone comes to the table with the best of intentions to do a good job, but as is the case for surgery, Everyone has a different style, different technical skills, and ultimately it has to meld with your aesthetics. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck, and thank you for your question.